Father, we are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by what we hear. We are only moved, O oh God, by the word of the Lord. As we go further into your word this morning, please speak to every one of us. Meet every one of us at the point of our needs and take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. God bless you. Please take your seat. Good morning. I pray that God Almighty we continue to abide with you and your family. And no matter what you are going through, you will laugh last in Jesus' name. I believe that God has a word of encouragement and wisdom for living. Encouragement and wisdom for living. It may feel like you are in a classroom today. It may feel like you are going through a teaching experience. But I pray that you open your heart to the Lord. In John, in third John chapter one verse two. The Bible declares very clearly, I wish above all things that you prosper. You be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. Three things that God desires for us prosperity, good health, and peace in salvation. Prosperity, good health, and peace in salvation. But today, our reality, what we see, is different. For most people in Nigeria, our reality is poverty. Our reality is disease and short lifespan. The average lifespan in Nigeria now is about 50 years. People die when they are about to start enjoying life. You normally retire. People retire at the age of 60. But average lifespan in Nigeria now, you don't even get to the age of retirement before people die. That is the reality that we face. And then we also face the reality of corruption and crime. What we are seeing and what we are experiencing is different from the promise of God for our lives. But I pray for someone here today that the almighty God will bring a new you to manifestation. The almighty God will bring up a new Nigeria. Four things, wisdom for living, that we are going to go through today, next Sunday, and the Sunday after. We'll need at least three Sundays to go through this psalm titled Nigeria and High, Joint Heirs of God's Promise. Number one, wisdom for living. What can you do to make Nigeria better? Please take note of these four. These are the four things we will cover in three Sundays. Number two, what can you do to make your life better? Number three, your destiny is tied to the destiny of Nigeria. You may not like it, you may not believe it, but your tomorrow will look like the tomorrow of Nigeria. So if you, want your, if you want your own life to be good, you will pray that Nigeria will be good. Because your destiny is tied to the destiny of Nigeria. It's only people that are not wise that wake up and speak negative things about the country. Oh, this country is bad. This country, you actually say negative things about your life. Every time you say something negative about Nigeria, 
You are saying something negative about your life. You are saying something negative about your children. You are saying something negative about your great, great grandchildren. But as Nigeria is, so shall your life look. And then number four, it is easy to blame others. But for every finger that is pointed outwards, three will point towards you. Oh, it's not my fault. It's the fault of the government. It's not my fault. It's the fault of my father. It's not my fault. It's the fault of my family. It's not my fault. It's the fault of my boss. Every time you point a finger, at least three are, they are pointing towards you. Is somebody ready for some hard words today? Can I see your hands up? Are you ready for the true counsel of God today? I see a better you. I thought I would hear a better amen. amen. I see a better you. Amen. And I see a better Nigeria. Amen. So what do you do to get there? Number one. Limit the number of children that you have. Hear me well, and those that are joining us all over the world. The road to a better Nigeria is very clear. And the road to a better you is very clear. It's whether you will choose to go through that road. Or you will be deceiving yourself. Believing that you are deceiving others. Limit the number of children that you have. Yesterday night, I spent so many hours doing a research, and I'll show you the results of the research that I did. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. Let's put it on the screen. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith. And it's worse than the Lord is saying, if you bring up children, you raise up a family, and you are not able to take care of them, you are worse than an unbeliever. You know, I told you whether you are ready to hear the truth. If anyone raises up a family, and he's not able to take care of them. It's worse than an infidel. There is a connection between how many children you have and what your future will look like. Let me show you one aspect of your research that I did yesterday night. Put, put it on the screen. I'll show you 10 countries. The countries in green and the countries in yellow. The countries in green are the countries that many of you would like to go to. Oh, you want to go to Luxembourg. You want to go to Switzerland. You want to go to America. You want to go to Canada. You want to go to UK. But why don't you check and see how many children they normally have in those countries? In each of those countries, on average, either one or zero number of children. How many of you can see the data on the screen? For all of those countries, on average, they will have only one child or none. Let's look at how comfortable those countries are. I looked at what is the average income of each person in that country. It's called GDP per capita. On average, how much is each person worth? How much do they make every month? In Luxembourg, I converted it to Naira so that it's easy for you to follow. On average, each person in Luxembourg earns per month four point, is that five? 4.5 million per month every month. Each person in that country on average 
In Switzerland, on average, each person earns 3.4 million every month. In the United States of America, 2.6 million. In Canada, 1.7. And in UK, 1.6. When you do the average of those countries, every month, each person in that country, on average, when you average it out, makes at least 2.8 million naira every month. Let's go to the countries where they like to have children. They, 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 they just have the anointing to have children. They are anointed, anointed to, 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 to just have children. Look at them in yellow. Egypt, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya. Each one of them are the minimum. We have two. And Nigeria, they put three. You know that that is even they are trying to just make it mild. Because Nigeria, they say it's God that gives children. It's God. It's God that gives children. It's God. Was God there when you were climbing that woman? It's God. It's God that gives children. Don't lie about God. When that man shows up again, my sister, let them read 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. Is this, are the sisters hearing me? When the man starts to get the anointing, you say to him, go and study 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. If any man is not able to provide for his house, it's worse than an infidel. The reason Nigeria is poor is because Nigeria is foolish. We claim to be religious, but our religion is foolishness. Unless First, Pete, First Timothy chapter five verse eight is not in your own Bible. Look at the position. When you look at, I look at the position of each country. All this yesterday night, I didn't finish until past eleven. In each of those countries, you see their position. There are about 190 countries in the world. Those in green, they either come first or second or fifth. On average, they are at what you call 95 percentile. Each of those countries are better than 95 percent of all the countries in the world. They score A. Look at the ones in yellow where they pray very well. They pray, they fast, they speak in tongues. What is their position? What position do they carry? Nigeria comes, what's the position of Nigeria? With all the speaking in tongues, you carry last. You do the average of all those countries in yellow. They are the 30th percentile. There is something they call percentile. In other words, they score F. They go to church. They speak in tongues. They fast. But they are foolish. Very, very foolish. I pray for somebody here today. The wisdom that will not allow you to sow the seed of your own sorrow. May God give unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Many people will queue up to go to the embassy, embassy of Canada, embassy of UK. You go there, then you go and spoil the place. The Bible is complete. We just choose sometimes to look at the one that we like. If it's only one child that you can raise and nurture, so be it. I rounded up those numbers so just so you know, to make it one. It's only, I think, one country, U.S., that had about 0 0.5. All of them were less than one child. 
What you are seeing, I just rounded it up to make it easy to understand. Many of them is 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, the number of children they have. Most choose not to. But this one, before you go to church, you sleep with your wife. After you come back from church, you sleep again with your wife. And then the woman will say, I, want, I say, ah, what's wrong with you? You have to be submissive. Submissive. You submit into poverty. I pray for you. May you be wise in Jesus' name. If it is only two you can cope with, that is enough. Because coping is more than money. You can have all the money in this world, but there is a limit to the time you have. How much time can you have to devote to six children? Even if you are a billionaire, you have all the money in this world, but you are limited by time. You will end up raising hoodlums because you don't have the time to pour yourself into their lives. There is a limit that any human being can cope with. By the time you start getting to three, you are now becoming a crowd. By the time you start having three children, it's already a crowd. A normal car, a normal car, not trailer. How many people can enter a normal car? A normal car. Maybe five. If your family cannot fit in a normal car, then something is abnormal about you. Hello? If your family cannot fit inside a normal car, unless they start lapping one another, they start lapping one another, something is wrong with your brain. <laughs> Do you want to hear the truth? <laughs> you, you want to hear the truth? Luke chapter 14, verse 28. Luke 14, verse 28 or 30. You see that I'm quoting the Bible. Because the Bible has the answer. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. For which of you intending to build a tower, seated not down first, and counted the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Let's happily, after you have laid the foundation, and you are not able to finish it, and all that behold, it begin to mock you. And then verse 30, they say, ah, this man began to build and was not able to, he started to have children, but he's not able to raise them. And every time he goes to Holy Ghost service, where, where are you going? No crusade. No Holy Ghost service. No anointing service. No laying up of the hands can turn you to a comfortable family if you have had more children than you can carry. I will never forget what somebody told me one day. He said, a driver, the driver came. Maybe the driver already has five or six or seven children. He came to the boss. Ah, boss, I just want to rejoice with you. Your wife has just delivered a baby. Whose wife? Whose wife? The driver, his wife just had a baby. He came to the boss. Ah, boss, I just want to rejoice with you. Your wife just had a baby. Which wife? Doesn't the wife know her husband? The boss that the driver is talking to, maybe a CEO in the office, has two children. The driver, the driver, six, seven, And then when it's time to go for a crusade, guess who is going to be there? The driver. When it's time to pray and fast, guess who is going to be there? The driver. You have, you have sold away your brain. You can fast all you want. 
and Nigeria can pray all at once. When you forget simple, common sense, you make Christianity a laughing stock. You make Christianity a laughing stock. Because how do you witness to somebody and say, I want you to give your life to Jesus? And they look at you. A clerk in the office, four children, five children, and you say, I just want you to give your life to Jesus. They will look at you. <laughs> it is what Jesus tells people to do. Raising a family is like a project. Don't raise beyond what you have the finances. And don't raise beyond what you have the time commitment. Like I said before, no crusade, no anointing service, no prayer, no fasting will help you if you choose to be foolish. Don't sow the seed of your own sorrow. Let me wrap up this point, number one. Every time you have a child that you cannot give quality education to, every time you have a child that you cannot give a life that is better than your own, you are an irresponsible parent. Your child must grow up to become better than you. And if you bring up that child and you're not able to give a future that is better than yours, you're an irresponsible parent. And not only an irresponsible parent you are, you are sowing the seed of your own sorrow. Because when you are already 60 years old, 70 years old, they will still be coming for pocket money. At the time you are supposed to be resting and enjoying life, they will still be coming for pocket money when you are 70 years old, 80 years old. But that is even at best. If you are not so fortunate, they will end up as armed robbers. Some of them will end up as Boko Haram. Some of them will end up as kidnappers. We look at those people today and we blame the government. When you were opening your trouser, you didn't know that you are sowing the seed of harm robbery. You didn't know you are sowing the seed of kidnappers. The child you cannot train will become a problem for you tomorrow. And will become a problem for your nation. Rise on your feet and say, Father, may I not sow the seed of my own sorrow. Go ahead and talk to God. May I not sow the seed of my own sorrow. May I not sow the seed of sorrow for my nation. May I not raise children that will become armed robbers. That will become area boys. That will become prostitutes. Because of my irresponsible behavior. Help me, Lord, not to sow the seed of sorrow for my life. Help me, Father. Help me to be wise. So that my tomorrow will not be a tomorrow of pain. So that my tomorrow will not be a tomorrow of suffering. And so that my children will not look at me and curse me. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. That last statement I just made, you are going to pray with it. Because I don't know what case you are now. If you have already passed the limit that you can carry. But I pray that your children will not one day look at you and curse you. Go ahead and say to God, Father, help me, Lord, to raise a proper children. And help me, Lord, to limit my family size to the number I can raise properly, so that my children will not rise up and curse me. Help me, Lord. 
Help me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray for every one of you, even though the sermon may be hard, but may God grant you the grace to receive the revelation. May God grant you the wisdom to act responsibly in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not sow the seed of your sorrow tomorrow, but you will bring up children enough that you can cope with, enough that you can raise. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Please take your seat. I see a better you, and I see a better Nigeria, but the path is what I'm saying to you this morning. Each time I listen to what the government say, and I don't hear them mention this particular point about population control, I say, who is deceiving who? You are raising up children like rabbits. No matter how much oil you sell, it still will not go around. Number two, be fair to all. Say no to discrimination. You want a better Nigeria and you want a better you. It's time to follow the word of God. It's time to follow the word of God if you want a better you and you want a better Nigeria. Please put the point on the screen. Say no to discrimination and be fair. Be fair to all. Why do I say this? You see many Christians and even non-Christians Everybody forming cliques. You look at Nigeria. Some people will gather and say, no, 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 uh, the next president must come from our, our region. The next this must come from our locality. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Matthew 22, verse 36 to 40. Let us read quickly. Matthew 22, Master, which is the great commandment in the law. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments and all the law and the prophets. There cannot be a better you if you still keep dividing yourself. So you say no to the following. Say no to tribalism. Don't treat an Awusa man different from the way you treat a Yoruba man. Don't treat somebody from the Igbo side of Nigeria differently from the way you treat somebody from the north. It's ungodly. It is ungodly. Every time you act out of discrimination, you act like an unbeliever. Say no to nepotism. Is my cousin. I, I have to find a place for him. I have to find a place for her. It, it, we came from the same town. I need to help her. I need to help him. When there are more qualified people for the job. Each time you give an opportunity to somebody, when there is a better person that can do it, you are destroying the future of Nigeria. Let me say it one more time. Each time you give a position to the person other than the most competent person, you are destroying the future of Nigeria and you are destroying the future of your children. The reason why our roads are bad today, the reason why the hospitals 
cannot treat. The reason why the schools are discrepant is because the wrong people were put in the positions. The people put there, not because of their competence, but because of who they know. That is why today, you and I are suffering. Because the wrong people were put in position. I don't know what it is you are doing in your own life. But every time you make a choice, other than the choice that is fair to all, you put the future of Nigeria and the future of your family in danger. I was speaking with the youths how many Sundays ago? Three, four Sundays ago. And some of them were talking about job opportunity. What can you do, pastor? What can the church do to give us job opportunity? We can train you. We can empower you. If you need to go to school, we can help you, give you money to go to school. If you need to buy equipment for your trade, maybe you are doing trade and you don't have money to buy equipment, we can help you. But if you think we will give you a job that you are not the most competent qualified for, never, not in life gate. Not in life gate. Because every time you choose wrongly, you are destroying the future of this country. Is somebody following me? You say no. Say no to bigotry. Oh, he's a Christian. He's a Muslim. He's an unbeliever. Be careful. Be careful. God can use anyone. God can use anyone. Oh, we can't, we can't take him. He's not a Christian. Oh, really? The one that is Christian. Are you sure the person is a Christian? We are going to pray with Mark chapter 3, verse 25. See, if the house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. I don't know in what area you have been practicing favoritism. Oh, it's not from my side of the country. Oh, it's not, it's not a member of my church. All you are doing is you are putting crisis in the life of your children and your children's children. Please rise on your feet and say, Father, help me to be fair to all. Help me to treat everyone equally. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. That is the journey to the better you. Because if you are fair, God will raise up hell for you when people are about to discriminate against you. Help me, Lord, to be fair. Help me to treat all with the same love. With the same love. With the same love. Help me, Father, to be fair. To say no to any form of discrimination on the basis of religion, on the basis of ethnicity, or any basis at all. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Please take your seat. Some may not quickly see the wisdom in what I just said, but each time you make the right decision, you are setting up yourself for divine intervention. Each time you do the right thing, regardless of whether the person is a Muslim or a Christian or a Northerner or a Easterner or Western, each time you do the right thing, you have set up yourself for divine intervention. That when, and whenever they want to discriminate against you, God in heaven will arise for you. Let me share this personal testimony. A company I once worked. I won't mention the name of the company. One day, I was, this is 20 years ago or more. I was just looking for, for a house at that time, a place to rent. And then I got a call. Where are you? Where are you? I said, I'm, I'm looking for a place to rent. I'm, I'm looking, shopping for, for, for apartment. Ah, come back to the office. Somebody needs to see you. Somebody needs to see you. Some of you may have had that testimony, real life testimony. I got back to the office. My boss said, please come, 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 come into my office. I got there. And then he said, 
This person said he wanted to see you. I looked at the person. Yes, sir. He asked me a question. Do you know me? I said, no, sir. <laughs> he looked at me. And then he looked at my boss. Thank God for sometimes people that are not Nigerians. You know, I showed you that data. I will still go back to it about two more times before I finish. Christianity that is not rooted in honesty is a fake Christianity. The man looked at me. He came from America, one of the most senior people in the world. He said, I am the reason why you are in this company. Because this man, and then he pointed to our boss, this man did not want you to come. Ah. Real life experience. The man that didn't want me to come had never seen me before. I don't know him. He didn't know me. Maybe he just saw my name and he saw that I'm from a certain part of the country. You have never seen me before. You don't know me. I don't know you. And then because you are the most senior person in Nigeria, you decided that this boy will not come. But thank God that there's somebody who is more senior than the person who is the most senior in Nigeria. I prophesy upon your life. When people want to discriminate against you, when people want to stand against you, may God raise up air for you in Jesus' name. Please rise on your feet and turn into prayer. Say, Father, intervene whenever there is going to be a discrimination against me. Father, intervene. The heart of kings are in your hands. And you turn it wherever you will. Intervene, oh God. And overrule. Intervene and overrule. Anyone that wants to take my place unjustly. And through me, intervene also to be fair to every human being. Love your neighbor as yourself. It does not matter where the person comes from. Love your neighbor as yourself. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. As you put into practice what you have had today and you are fair to everybody, may God intervene in your own situation too. Nobody else will take your own possession. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Take your seat as I close. We will need three Sundays to finish. But let, let me just close with this one, number three. Be honest. Speak and act truthfully. Speak and act truthfully. I see a better you. And I see a better Nigeria. When you choose to be honest in everything that you do. Even when it is painful to be honest. Hear me out. That you choose to be honest even when it is painful to be honest. You know that if you, are, if you speak the truth, they may sack you. Still say the truth. You know that if you speak the truth, you will not get that promotion. Still say the truth. Because there is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Nigeria is the way it is today. Because I say it one more time. Our religiousness is fake. Our Christianity, for the most part, is fake. Nigeria is where it is today. But most people in this country cannot, you, you cannot vouch for them to, do, to say the truth or to act truthfully. And yet, 
they are the ones that pray the most. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Proverbs 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalts, but sin is a reproach to... I'm going to show you that research again that I did yesterday night. You will see the connection between being truthful and living a peaceful and glorious life. You may say they don't know God in Canada. You may say, ah, they don't go to church in UK. You may say, ah, America, they are not godly people. But unfortunately, they are more truthful than you that you go to church. Let's, let's, let me show you the data again. The connection between how a country progresses and how truthful the people are. Look at the last column, the honesty column. There is something they call corruption index. If you go to IMF or the World Bank, they rank every country in how truthful the people in those countries are. Again, over 190 countries. If you look at the countries in green, out of 190 countries, nine position, fourth position, 23 position, 12 position, you know, 12 position. They don't go to church like we do. They don't fast like we do. They don't speak in tongues like we do. But they speak the truth more than we do. That is why their country is better. Look at the countries in yellow where they pray well. Position. Egypt, what do they carry? Ghana. Beloved Nigeria. That is where they do crusade. That is the country they do anointing service. That is a country they fast for 100 days. But they will never, cannot be trusted to say the truth. Christians, Muslims, unbelievers, it's the same thing. Nigeria is the way it is. Not because there is no God in heaven, but because we have turned God to a liar. Nigeria is the way it is, and your life is the way it is, for the most part, for many of us. Not because there is not a God that can save. But you deceive yourself, thinking that you are deceiving God. Every country where truth does not exist, will eventually become poor. It's not magic. It's not magic. There are things that are foundational principles of God. You break those principles, there is no amount of fasting that can help you. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach. Let's flip to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, and then we'll come back here before we I then close. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. If there's any of you or those that are listening online, you are not truthful in your life. Maybe you shouldn't even bother going to church because you're just wasting your time. Proverbs 12, verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. But they that did truly are his delight. When you cannot speak the truth, you become an abomination. So those countries, when you flip back, those countries understand that principle. That a nation cannot be built on lies. You cannot build a nation and a life on lies. That is why many of you are looking for visa to America. 
in spite of all your fasting and prayer, you are looking for a visa to Canada. Those nations are founded on truth. I will share with you a personal testimony and, and not, not because I want to glorify myself, but to challenge you. Two testimonies. Many years ago, I was asked to do a special project by the management of the company I worked for. There was so much crisis in the, in the, in the company, and I said, who can we ask, who, who can we call upon to do an independent study and tell us the truth? They came looking for me. I don't know who directed them, but they, they asked me to, to lead that study. By the time we finished the study, <laughs> how are you going to tell the king that the king has been wrong? That day came, I was called forward. The MD was sitting right in front of me. The deputy managing director was sitting right in front of me. And I said, this is what has happened. I knew that maybe I may not have a job after that day. I was prepared for what would happen. Maybe I won't have a job after that day. Immediately we finished that meeting, one of my colleagues came to me and said, ah, how can you speak like that in front of the managing director? You are bold, though. So let's leave it. We don't know. Whatever they will do, let them do. But what I have said is what we found out. Righteousness exalts a nation. I was afraid that I may lose my job. But there was somebody in that crowd Again, an American. It was a tough message to say to your management. It was many years after that I heard that that man at that meeting, that American, went to America back, went to the headquarters of the finance function and told them there is this young man in Nigeria that is the man that I want to be my general manager planning. I was afraid that I may not have a job by saying the truth. But there was someone in the crowd that saw that. You may look at me today and say, this man is successful. I have taken some risk that, that just happened to have turned out right. I could have been on the streets looking for a job. But the word of God is, is yea and amen. Righteousness exalts a nation. It may take a long time for you to see the reward. But you can never fail when you stand on the truth. Early this month, I did a transaction. And a lawyer came to me and said, you will sign this. Ooh, are there lawyers here? Let me see the lawyers. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Just wave up your hand. Wave your hand. God bless you, the lawyers. Uh -huh. The lawyer came and said, sir, you will sign this deed of assignment. This one is the one that is between you and the buyer you will sign this one. It, the, the value is not the same thing, you know. This one is the one we will present to the government. I looked at him. I, they, they didn't tell you before. The person you are coming to. Luckily, my agent came not too long after. He said, I told him, but he won't listen. I told him, that even when I am the one buying, when I buy a property and they tell me, use a small number in the one you will send to government so that you can pay smaller tax. I say, no, use the real number. Let me pay more 
let me pay more tax, let me pay more charges. But God forbid that I sign what is not the correct thing. Rise on your feet and cry to God. Please help me to stand for truth so that you can arise and intervene in my situation. Cry to God. This is the life that God wants for us as his children. It may be painful. It may be difficult. But there is a price to pay for a better tomorrow. Cry to God. Help me, Lord. Help me to stand for the truth. Help me, Lord, to stand for the truth. Help me, Lord. Even when it is painful, help me to stand for the truth, Lord. Help me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Let me close. Before you sit down, we are going to pray this prayer. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. The Lord says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying to me, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then said, Hi, here I am. Send me. Is someone ready to go for Nigeria? Is someone ready to be a voice of reason? Is someone ready to speak the truth even when it's not convenient? Is someone ready to act responsibly? Just go ahead and say, Father, here I am, send me. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. Here I am, send me. Say, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Cry to God. Here I am, Lord, send me. I will not raise a family that I do not have the means to support. I will not, Father, discriminate on any basis, Lord. And I will speak the truth even when it's not convenient. Here I am, send me. Cry to God. Here I am, send me. Here I am. I see a better me. I see a better me. I see a better Nigeria. Here I am, Lord, send me. Send me, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As you have made that decision, may you indeed be a light in your family in Jesus' name. And may you indeed be a light in this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. May a better you emerge for the glory of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. you. can take your seat. You are here this morning. You have struggled with a life that is not according to the word of God. You have struggled with a life that is not according to the word of God. And you just want to surrender your life to Jesus today. To live a new kind of life. That Jesus himself will be the anchor of your life. All eyes closed. You are that person who say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus. And live a life that God can be proud of. Just wave that hand. God bless you. Wave it to me. I want to pray for you. Just keep waving it. Keep waving it. Keep waving it. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. Keep waving it. Keep waving it. Jesus is going to do something new in your life, even as you surrender to him. Please come forward. Take a step of faith. As you take that song, I'm not moved by what I see. There is a new you that we emerge today. Please come. I want to pray with you. I'm not moved by what I come, see. Come, come, come. Hallelujah. Keep coming, keep coming. I'm not moved by what I hear. Hey, Pastor, pray for me. Hallelujah. Pray with me. I'm not moved. I want to give my life to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm not moved. God bless you. Come. Keep coming, keep coming. See, I'm only moved by the word of God. See, I'm only moved by the word of God. God bless you. Come, come. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. One more time.
all time. Until you give your life to Christ, it will be impossible to live a righteous life. By your power, you cannot do it. You need the power of Christ working in you. So if you are that person, you'll say, Pastor, I'm, you, pray with me, pray for me. You want to really give your life to Jesus so that the new you can emerge. Please come as you take that song one more time. I'd like to pray with you. I'm not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. God bless you. Sisters, please say after me, my Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I surrender my life unto you. Please accept me into your kingdom. Be the Lord over my life. Reign in me, Father, and help me to live a life that will please you. In my life, Father, magnify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. Let's clap for them as they go. God bless you. Let's clap for them. God bless you. God bless you. The rest of us just rise on our feet. Just rise on our feet. I don't know what you have struggled with in your life. It's possible you have struggled in a way that you know is not, is not right with God. But you just want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You are already born again. But maybe God has spoken to you today. And you just want to rededicate your life as a Christian. Please come as I take that song. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. I want to pray for you, especially. You just want to rededicate your life to God as a true Christian. Please come. I want to pray for you. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time. God bless you. Come, come, oh my brother. Lord. You just want to rededicate your life. You want to rededicate your life. Touch me one more time. Oh Lord, God can take you to a higher touch place. From in you, God, touch me one more time. It doesn't matter whether you are a pastor, whether you are a minister. From you, God, come, come. You just want to rededicate. You can stand. You can stand. It's okay. It's okay. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Touch me, Lord. Touch me. Touch me with your head. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. pray for my brothers and sisters that are in front. Let's put on the screen 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. Just in case you are still out there. I, ju I just want to pray for you. That God will touch you. 
and your Christianity will go to the next level. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You are born again, but there is still some form of iniquity in your life. You can't deceive God. God knoweth those that are his. Please come as I pray for you as I take that song one more time. If you are still there, come. Touch me one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Come, oh, come. Lord, touch me one more time. There is a new beginning touch for you. Me one more time. There is a new beginning. There is a new beginning. Touch me, touch me one more time. There is a new beginning. Touch me one more time. Lord. One more time. Lord. There is a new beginning. there but that's it what I feel in my spirit that there's somebody out there you are struggling you are struggling to come forward and just reconcile with Jesus <laughs> you can decide to be on your own and try to do it on your own but the starting point of the next journey of your life is when you come forward and say Lord here I am I need help I remember many years ago when I read the book by Billy Graham. He said they went to a crusade and he, as he made the call, somebody in the congregation looked at his neighbor that he was, said, I need to go to the front. Here is your purse. While the service was going on, that person had stolen the purse of the person sitting next to him in the church. But as he heard the voice of God, he said, no, I, I need to go. He gave the post back to the person. Here is your post. I am going forward. There's a time when you hear the word of God and you know it's for you. I sense there's at least one more person that is still struggling. I'll give you one more, one more chance as I make the call. It's between you and God. Take that song one more time. I want to pray for you. Oh, Lord. Come, come. If you are there. One more time. Touch me one more time. Thank you.
in front, please lift up your hand and cry to God. Say, please touch me one more time. Sanctify me. Cleanse me. Help me, Lord, to live for you. Help me to shine for you. Use me for your glory, Lord. If there is any way, Lord, that I have moved away from your purpose from my life, please have mercy on me. Restore me. Restore me, Lord. I can sense there are so many strong Christians among you that those who are supposed to be mighty for God. But maybe you became too cold or you became careless. Careless. Just say, Father, please touch me one more time. Recharge my spiritual battery once again. Help me to return to your purpose for my, for my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. May God Almighty recharge your spiritual batteries and may you shine for the Lord. May you fulfill purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. You can return. Touch me one more time. Lord, touch me one more time. Touch me one more time.